You are listening to Spot On, a health and wellness podcast that breaks through the latest media headlines to provide you with accurate and usable information that is, well, spot on, spot on to meet your needs. I am your host, Dr. Joan Salji Blake, a nutrition professor at Boston University and the author of the college textbook called Nutrition and You, which is used in colleges across the United States and abroad. Here we go again. We are quarantined. It's, um, I don't know how many weeks, but it seems too long. We talked about how the importance of kindness and how kindness can help us feel good um, when we're hunkering down or locked in. This week's episode, we're going to bring it to another level, and I just can't wait to share this episode of Spot On with you. Today I have a, a wonderful, wonderful writer on. Her name is Elizabeth Svoboda, and she is a contributor to Greater Good Magazine, and she's also the author of a book of What Makes a Hero? The Surprising Science of Selflessness. I just thought this is fabulous. And she's written for the New York Times and Psychology Today and the Washington Post. And I invited her on because I think during this hunker down period, sometimes we just talk, we just focus on me, 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 me. And I'm wondering if we should focus on we, 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 we in in that the greater good. So I brought her on because she has been writing about this for over a decade. So Elizabeth, welcome to Spot On. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Oh, please. So let me tell you, how did you get into this, like writing for the greater good? And tell, tell me how you got into this t- topic because you've been doing this for over a decade. Yeah, that's a great question. It was sort of a meandering road, I would say. Uh, My parents were always big role models for me. My dad has done a lot of medical volunteer work overseas. Um, He's a vascular surgeon. And so I think all along I had that role modeling in my life, which was wonderful. And But I was also always curious about where that comes from, why some people seem to have this drive to reach out to others and to make their lives better while other people sort of hang back, only care about themselves, and then every point along the spectrum in between. And I was very curious about what made different people land on different parts of that spectrum. And that sort of sent me on this entire journey of writing the book, interviewing researchers who are looking at the origins of heroism and altruism. And it's been a wonderful journey so far, and I hope to be able to stay on it for many years. Well, you better, because I'm hooked on you already, because you wrote an article about this in the Greater Good magazine about helping others can help you cope with a lockdown. And I read this, and this was just like a, like, you know what it was, Elizabeth? Chicken soup. You know how you have chicken soup and you just feel so good and warm and cozy? You, this whole article was like I was sipping chicken soup. So in the article, yeah, you had said, you know, again, again, we're going to put this article on the spot on Facebook page, but how helping others, you said during this time, and I kind of mentioned that in the way in, is you know, to to turn outward rather than turn inward during like this this crisis or any crisis they have. What would you mean by that? Yeah, I think for me, it's sort of a visual that helps me picture what's going on. It's, it's a shift in focus. It's kind of a term to describe focusing on problems that need to be solved in the wider world outside of us. And I think, and this has definitely happened to me, that it's really easy right now to get swallowed up in whatever our own fears are, whatever our own concerns are. And it does make sense to address that to some extent, because those fears and those concerns are very real. But I think at the same time, it's important to keep an eye on broadening your focus and also looking to what other people need. And that when you do that, It has a way of putting those concerns that are bouncing around inside your own head, putting those in perspective so they don't maybe look quite as as big or loom as large as they did before. Right. And I think there's something about we're all in this together. I mean, we see this, that, that hashtag all the time. But I think if we focus on the community, 
And, and that's something we, we haven't done in a while, you know, and we have to focus on the community and how that my actions could help your actions. You know, we did a wonderful spot on episode about health with Dr. Sandra Galea, and he said this, and we, we, interestingly, we taped this way before this crisis, and he said, basically, the health your health, meaning my health, really depends upon the health of others. And he, I mean, he could have predicted this. I mean, really, because if I am practicing good health, mask, social distance, um, you know, everybody has to do this from our own health. You talked about some research in this article, and you said that there's actually research that suggests that, you know, reaching out to others will improve your mental, physical health. So in other words, if I reach out, I'm going to actually benefit from this. Right. Absolutely. And I think, as you said, this virus has a way of showing us how interdependent we all really are. And an interesting side of that, which a lot of people don't realize, is that Helping others really is a win-win scenario during, especially during a time like this. Um, what we know from many years of research is that people who give their focus to volunteering, to helping others, and it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be as little as a couple hours a week or so. Those people do do better in life, both mentally and physically. They report feeling happier as a result of helping. Uh, their stress levels tend to be lower. And, you know, these are population surveys that their mortality rate is actually lower. Ba basically, what that means is they're less likely to die over a given period of time than people who don't help. So this is happening at the mental level. This is happening at the physical level. It, it's, it's very profound. Are you having trouble sleeping, focusing, or relaxing? If the answer is yes, then the TM Soft's White Noise Sleep Sounds podcast has got you covered. This hour-long podcast is made to help you get rid of distractions, reduce stress, relax, and most importantly, get better sleep. You can listen to sounds of nature, white noise, relaxing music, and much, much more. You can check out the TM Soft's White Noise Sleep Sounds podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. You said something in the article and 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 I'm gonna say I think you're wrong. So let me let me tell you why I think you're wrong. You said in helping others get through the crisis, you can help yourself in equal measures. Elizabeth, I think you're wrong. I think I benefit more helping people. Like I think I I don't think it's equal measures. I think when I do something nice and I help something, I am I am proud as a little peacock. You know what I mean? And and it, it makes me happy all day long. Like I think, gee, just by running over this meal to this elderly, you know, woman that's living all by herself, she's happy, but I'm like proud as a peacock because she's happy. So I think I get more benefit. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I've felt that myself. So I, I think you're right. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, it's really important to us. We want to feel useful. We want to contribute to the greater good. And I think especially when you get feedback from people that they appreciate what you're doing, they need someone like this in their lives, like we get this really powerful feeling like this helper's high, where what you're saying to yourself is like, wow, this is amazing. This is really what I'm supposed to be up to right now. Right. I mean, let's face it. You feel good when you do good. Uh, yeah. And, and, and this is not like Einstein, but you forget that when you get wrapped up in your world and then you're you know, spending too much while well, focusing on your to-do list and everything like that. But then when you have to hunker down like this, then you realize how correct that is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think one of the things that we've all been sort of bombarded with the news of what's happening with the coronavirus, and we see things that feel very insurmountable, like we see these numbers, numbers of cases in your city, number of new cases, number of people on ventilators. And I think when you focus too much on all of that, it has a way of making you feel kind of helpless. But when you focus on that one person that 
you know, that, that one person that's within your circle of influence that you actually do have the power to help, the impact of that is fantastic. And you feel like you actually are doing your part and you're, you're pulling your weight in, in this in this crisis. Right. You had said that in the article, you know, when you direct your focus away from the scary abstractions, because, you know, we're getting scary numbers in here. But if you bring it back down to concrete, doable things that you can do, you do feel empowered. You feel like, wait a minute, just wait a minute. You know, like, okay, but at least I have control over whatever I'm doing. And it does, it gives you some sense of, uh, of empowerment, which is what we definitely want to do. All of us are staying at home. Some people have smaller homes than others. Uh, some people have more people with them at home hunkering down than others. But what are what are some examples of, you know, creative stay at home activities you can do that can help others? Yeah, part of the fun of writing this article was how many great examples of this I came across. It was amazing to see how ingenious people were being. Uh, for example, I talked to a medical student who was actually pretty frustrated because um, after COVID-19 really started ramping up, she and other med students weren't allowed in most cases to be involved in patient care. So she figured, hey, I, I can't be on the front lines. I better do something else. So what she ended up doing was starting a movement on Twitter called Students Against COVID. And it was sort of a touch point, a community to support other medical students and other people, just allies who wanted to find uh, creative ways to help. And so people have been doing things like calling labs, saying, do you have any personal protective equipment you can donate to the hospital? Just things like that, that they can do from home. Um, they're investigating telemedicine options where med students can help with consultations. So yeah, there, there are amazing things that you can do that don't necessarily involve getting out of quarantine. And of course, there are also people working on things like sewing masks at home to donate, writing letters. I think this is especially important, writing letters to people at care centers who mm -hmm. are feeling mm -hmm. incredibly lonely right now. Uh, and often, uh, often they can't have their families come visit at this time. So getting that human connection, e even from somebody they don't know, could, could mean the world for them right now. Well, you know, I don't know if you read this. I, I saw this on the news, but um, the actor, Matthew McConaughey, he did a senior citizen's bingo on Zoom. And they, <laughs> it's, oh, you, you have got, you've got to see this. Just Google it. It's hysterical. And so, so here is his, him and his wife and his kids and his mother are all like organizing the bingo game for the seniors. And the seniors are like thinking this is like a rock concert. Like I, this is like so funny. They're having such a ball. And when you think about it, it's a simple bingo game. Everybody loves bingo. But what a fun thing to do to reach out to a senior citizen, citizens at Sisters Living and to just bring some joy. And it could be little things like that. I guess you can call your grandmother or what are some other things that maybe we could be doing to reach out even though we can't go out? Right. And I think one thing to emphasize is it doesn't have to be through a traditional volunteer program at all. Like Matthew, he, he created his whole thing. And, you know, just on a smaller scale here, I've been connecting with my cousins, trying to set up mm. Zoom chats where we can all all eight or nine of us connect with each other at the same time and just catch up on each other's lives. And that that's something that, you know, we're, we're all kind of hungry for human contact right now. And in normal times, we'd all be so busy that we wouldn't have the chance to do this. So if we take it, I think this is a great opportunity to, to strengthen those connections and definitely feel better yourself, get yourself in a better frame of mind, even as you're providing that boost to others. Right, right. You had mentioned in the article, the, you know, talking about you suggest to match your strength to the right, right opportunity. Uh, in other words, when it comes to helping out, what did you mean by that? Yeah, I think um, we all, of course, have different levels of risk in dealing with this virus. So, for instance, if you're immune compromised or if you're over 85 or something like that, you might decide that maybe it's not ideal for you to go volunteer at your local food bank where you'd be exposed to dozens of people. Maybe you then would choose a more 
virtual helping opportunity like writing letters, donating money. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, these food banks, I know they really do need volunteers. Um, the need is so great, especially in the cities that are hardest hit. So if you are young, if you are a member of a lower risk group and you're not living with anyone else who's high risk, um, I, I would encourage people to show up to volunteer because a lot of people are afraid to do so right now. But if you're willing to take on that level of risk, it really is important to the community. They need people to deliver those services to people who have lost their jobs, people who are vulnerable. So that is incredibly important as well. Right. I'm reading so much about food shortage uh, shortages and how we have to make sure we do donate food and get it out to people. And, you know, it, it, listen, it could be as easy as, okay, you run into the supermarket, you got to get you a few things. Why don't you buy a few extra boxes of macaroni and cheese, a couple cans of beans and some salsa, put it in the food pantry donation at the supermarket. They often have like a basket there, a barrel. And you know something? You could put beans, macaroni, cheese, salsa. You got a Mexican macaroni and cheese, which is my favorite. But, and so in other words, uh, yeah, so like you go and do an errand, but drop some in the box and that'll make you feel good. Like you've got your groceries and now they can, they can get out and somebody who need can have that. So these are, these are great. I, I can't wait to get this article up on the spot on Facebook page because you are, when you read it, you're really going to feel empowered and you're going to feel motivated to help. Um, and this is what this is all about. Cause when we, when we got found this article, we were just like, okay, she's coming on. I don't care where she is. She is definitely coming on, uh, spot on. But I also want to say you have a new book coming out. So can you tell us about the new book? Yes. Well, I just had a book come out. Um, well, it's within the past year, uh, last August. It's called the Life Heroic, How to Unleash Your Most Amazing Self. And this is actually specifically for kids. So I would say anywhere from a third to an eighth grade range. And this was an absolute blast for me to write because I was talking to young heroes who are doing such amazing things in the world. I, I talked to uh, one girl who, before she even entered high school, she was lobbying the Florida legislature for more access to services for visually impaired kids at school. And then there was uh, another kid who was collecting donations of soccer balls to send to underserved communities around the world. So it, it just mind blowing. And I think for kids, having these role models that are their same age, it's one thing to have great parents. We, we all appreciate the value of great parents, but when you see somebody else who's your same age doing these amazing things, I, I think it kind of encourages you to step up a little bit and see what you can do in your own community as well. I think this is fabulous. Now, is it is it written for younger people to be able to read it or older adults to read it and tell the young kids about it? Yeah, I think for like third grade and up, it's a pretty easy reading level okay. for them. But under that, I, I have younger kids and I've been reading them, you know, a chapter at a time out loud. So I think the stories really translate to younger ages when presented that way. And I have to say, my dad read the book and he said, this, this isn't just for kids. This is for adults too. I'm getting more out of it than I thought. So you, you never know if you're an adult, you might get a kick out of it as well. Okay. Well, we'll let me tell you something right now. We're putting this on the spot on a link to this on the spot on uh, Facebook page, and you're going to be a New York Times bestseller by the time with this airs. I'm just telling you this right now, okay? And and your father, your your father would be more, even more proud of you. But Elizabeth, I I can't thank you enough for first writing this, for second having this passion writing uh, two books on the topic. And for coming on spot on and, and for, for helping us to rethink how do we u utilize this time hunkering down to help others and really, really what it is doing is help ourselves. So thank you again for being on spot on. Thank you so much. What a wonderful discussion. And I look forward to connecting with your listeners. Spot On is supported by the Boston University Sargent College's Master of Science degree in Nutrition program. Log on to bu.edu to learn more about this fabulous nutrition graduate program. Thank you for listening to Spot On. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. This way you'll get every new episode every week. 
And by the way, leave us a nice review. And can you also like us on our Spot On Facebook page and suggest topics for future episodes? Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Joan Salji Blake. And oh, by the way, can you send this episode to five of your friends? Do I ask a lot of you?